Today, we are diving into one of the newest and largest freehold developments, not just in District 15, but for the whole of Singapore. But with entry prices coming in at close to 3,000 PSF, question is, is it still worth it? Welcome back to the next episode of our condo new launch reviews where we peel away the hype of a particular launch to share with you guys our honest feedback. Today we'll be taking a look at the continuum. Ready? Let's, Let's go! go. We're going to break down this review into a couple of different sections, starting first off with project information such as its location, amenities, facilities, so on. Followed up by our thoughts on its layouts, and then moving on to the three things we like and don't quite like about the continuum. And throughout the video, we're going to sprinkle in a little bit of our thoughts on how continuum compares up with Tembusu Grand as well as Grand Dunman. So for the benefit of those of you who aren't too familiar with District 15 and the location of Continuum as a whole, let's take a look in greater detail. So now, District 15 is one of the biggest districts in Singapore, located very, very near East Coast Park. Um, the one that most of us are familiar with really is um, the Mayor area, the Parkway Parade area, the Amber area, okay? Uh, but for the three launches that are coming up this year, they are located closer towards uh, the northwestern side of District 15, right about over here. Okay, so District 15 is huge, okay, it stretches all the way from Bedok, as you can see over here, uh, down the whole East Coast Park, and ending very, very close to Suntec City, ending at where the National Stadium is. Uh, basically, anything below the East-West line, okay, uh, excluding Geylang, all the way down to the, the sea, you can consider it District 15, all right? Now, looking at the specific location of Continuum, actually Elizabeth and I lived in the area for a little bit. So now let us share, let me share with you what are my thoughts from somebody who actually lived there. Let's take a look. So this is where the Continuum is located at, at Thiam Sui uh, Avenue. It's surrounded by quite a few smaller developments. Um, we've also put in the price performance of all these uh, developments in our consolidated uh, research sheet. Again, if you want to take a look at that, just drop us a text and we're happy to send it over to you. Now, I'm going to start off the breakdown of the specific location in a systematic clockwise manner. Now, if you zoom out to the north, right, we have Paya Leba MRT. Walking-wise, it may take you about 15 minutes like if you want to walk all the way from Tiam Sui Avenue but if you take a bus uh, from over here is one two about two bus stops will get you to um, Paya Lebar MRT over there we have PLQ Mall Singpo Center uh, Paya Lebar Square so it's really really um, basically three shopping malls in, in one particular area. Lots of things uh, to do, right? Heidi Lao, cinemas and whatnot. Uh, and because right now it's um, Ramadan season, um, over here we do have the Ramadan Bazaar. Um, why, one thing I really like about this area as a whole is we have a very good mixture. So with District 15 being traditionally known as somewhere a little bit more atas, uh, we have very affordable uh, food, uh, affordable uh, marketing options as well. Um, so we have the slightly newer malls over here. And for those of you who prefer something of maybe a little bit more old school, right? we have City Plaza. Um, so here, right, reasonably priced eats. Uh, to the right, Kinex Mall. Um, not the most happening uh, of malls, but you know, you, you, you have Daiso over there, F&B options, a lot of uh, tuition places, music schools. Hick Road Market, right? I, really, I like Hick Road Market. And also this Block 12 over here, they have a very nice um, uh, tender fresh, right? Hit Road Market, nice Miru Pools, and those sort of things. Uh, so it's a wet market plus a food center, right? So you can do uh, your marketing over there. And I, I suspect the folks at uh, Continuum, this is where they will go to for their uh, wet market shopping. Um, for supermarket shopping, uh, we have supermarket in Kinex Mall, okay? 
moving a little bit to the right so over here it's the Juche area uh, quaint area uh, finally undergoing some pretty decent transformation um, out out goes um, a lot of the uh, not so a bit dingy KTVs and whatnot right but in comes uh, a lot of nice quaint cafes uh, hipster cafes right so lots of transformation happening in the Juchet area uh, I really think it's going to be the east coast alternative to Tiong Bahru moving down a little bit more that's where we come to I want to Katong and then uh, Parkway Parade already so Parkway Parade Again, walking distance wise to Parkway, uh, maybe a little bit far. Most of them will prefer to drive over to Parkway Parade. Uh, it's a but very short drive, about five minutes will get you there. You just have to come down Haig Road, Amber Road roundabout and hit uh, Parkway already lah, coming from our uh, actual site over here. So down Parkway, we have a lot of our older Amber area condos. So now this are the condos that perform really really well uh, it's basically where we wrap around our entire discussion on the new NO uh, supply dynamics uh, which we will touch on a little bit later on okay um, down this way it's the mayor area also very very high end again with very very good price performances one downside for the mayor area really is if you take a look at like that is primarily residential area it doesn't have a lot of amenities that is really the complaint that people have when they look at the amber area and also the mayor area but as we come up to back towards where uh we are at right the continuum at Tamsui Avenue to the left of continuum we have Dakota MRT now that is just a two bus stops away 822 meters away as you can see over here and it's at Dakota MRT that I have my favorite hawker center uh, in the whole of Singapore right Old Airport Road hawker center over there we have uh, lots of lots of good food but it's also over here at the Dakota that you can really tell how sought after uh, this particular area is simply by the price of the HDBs in that area and also how strong the price performance are of the condos like the Water Bank and Dakota residences. Okay, so now over here, uh, a little bit further up would be Geylang already. So now. We are not that near Geylang, so it wouldn't be that big of a concern, right? Because uh, Geylang is really, really long, and actually Geylang is out of District uh, 15 already, right? So not that near um, uh, uh, in that essence, because if you go a bit further up from Geylang, right, when you go to the areas like Aljuni, you do get people giving that kind of concern, like it is near Geylang, right? But if you look further down uh, in the areas like Dakota and uh, Dunman area, you don't get that kind of objections la, in the market, right? So now that is for uh, the location in a little bit more specific detail. Now, also a very, very important part, schools for all the Kiasu Singaporean parents that we are. Uh, around 1km of the continuum, we're going to have Gonghua School, right? Perhaps the second best school in District 15 after Taunan. So it's a co-ed school, good in a way you only need to do volunteer work once for your first kid. We also have Tanjong Katong Primary and Head Girls. So be it if you have a son or a daughter, you are covered in that aspect. Uh, of course, Tao Nan being between 1 to 2 km uh, and, and Tao, Tao Nan as it is, uh, you, you don't have to bother. Lah. I think within 1 or 2 km, there's, there's no way you're getting into it anyway. Now, we are going to go even more in depth into the site specifically. The continuum is flanked by Tanjong Katong Road and Haig Road. Now, with the site being split into two with Tiam Sui Avenue running right through the middle of the project. Now, we're going to share our thoughts about what we think about this later on in the video. But it is what it is. Uh, there's Tiam Sui Avenue that runs right through it. Not a big road, single lane each way. Right, Tanjong Katong Road is a slightly bigger road. I believe it's two to three lanes uh, on each side. Haig Road is a smaller road, uh, single lane uh, uh, each way, okay? 
Now with the fact that the side is split into two, you're gonna get two entrances. So for the north side, the folks will enter in through Tanjong Katong Road and then turning in through this way. Okay, the folks staying in the south will have your primary entrance over here. Uh, they can still come in from Tanjong Katong Road, but they have to go all the way down and turn in from here. Lah. An alternative would be to come in through Haig Road. Okay. Now, in terms of views, okay, um, I must say, you're not going to get much uh, of it. Originally, had the site been merged into one, removing Tian Sui Avenue through the middle, uh, I believe the inward facing ones, you would have really a view of quite a, a, a big pool in the middle. But with the site being split into two, uh, the pools aren't that big. Um, so even if you are like third, Maybe if you are second and third floor, you can still see a fair bit of the pool. But once you go to maybe fourth, fifth floor, you may not see the pool that much because the pool is not very, very wide. Okay. Uh, on the outside, okay, um, do note that at the front and the back of the development, for this, I'm going to scroll a bit further up. Okay. Note that on the front and the back, of continuum it's already pretty much built up with a fair number of condominiums and with the unit primarily um, the units primarily facing north and south you're not going to get much of a view perhaps the best chance is on this side at uh, on the southern side uh, this block that protrudes out that overlooks the current the current petrol station uh, Right, this this block two over here, la, and if you tilt it on the right and it overlooks the entrance and the petrol station, this one you will get a pretty uh, decent view. Um, this one out, I'm afraid, even though we overlook the entrance over here and a couple of landed houses over here, there's a pretty built up uh, condominium on the bottom right uh, over here. So all those facing out, you're not gonna get much of a view. Facing in, you'll be block to block overlooking Kiam Sui Avenue. Now let's take a look at the facilities. So with this site essentially split into two, what the developers are saying is that uh, it's a good thing, right? They try to uh, turn uh, lemons into lemonades by saying, you know what, it's a good thing. Now you have two of everything. We're going to give you two of everything. In a sense, it's, it's good, but I would have much rather the entire site be merged into one. Now, how is north and south side going to be connected? They're going to be connected via an overhead bridge. Um, again, right? I think it will probably be one of the first developments in Singapore that's linked uh, that has a, a a overhead bridge in the development itself, and that's the only way for you to get from the north to the south side. Even the basement is not connected. So, I'm I'm going to pretty much put my head out there and say your visitors if you're going to buy continue your visitors are bound to get lost uh, especially the first time they come in uh, and then the only way they can get to your house is either they have to cross the overhead bridge or drive out and come to the other side hopefully the guards there are well trained and you know if you report the wrong unit they will tell you to go around and come in through the other side but other than that, right, full-fledged uh, facilities uh, over here, you're going to see a good chunk of facilities, uh, basically everything that you need. What I do quite like is the fact that they are conserving one of the houses to turn it into sort of a clubhouse um, uh, over here. Okay, let me show that to you. That is one nice thing. over here la right it's quite nice um not the first right it's actually quite common in the district 15 area uh, where there are a lot of heritage bungalows and whatnot right we've seen one like that in the sea view uh before so it's not going to be the first but I, I i do actually quite like it um it gives the place a little bit of charm something a little uh, more unique another unique thing which i do quite like um would be the fact that they are going to have some rooftop uh gardens and roof rooftop facilities okay so pardon me as i scroll up and down the the way they split the briefing is a little bit odd uh, but let me come to that the rooftop area 
Okay, they do. They 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 will have uh, quite nice playgrounds, right? Very very family orientated. You see over here, there's an entire chunk over here that's designated for the play area near the tennis courts, lah. Yep, and so this will be the rooftop terrace, right? Viewed on the north and the south. And I think they've orientated in a way to allow you to maximize the views. So while the development as a whole, most of the units aren't going to have much of a view. Uh, if you want to have a view, you can go uh, up to the rooftop, lah, which, you know, once you go to the northern rooftop and you view west, you're going to see the city skyline. You're going to see... Um, you're going to be able to see the city skyline, fireworks, uh, and whatnot. Nah. And they do have like sky jacuzzis, outdoor lounges, grill, grill decks. Pretty nice, right? Sky bar, sky fitness, yoga lounge, hot tubs, uh, all the kind of things. Nah. And it's mirrored down to the south side as well. So essentially, right, you're going to get two 400 unit developments. Basically, self-sufficient on its own. Uh, but now you have two of everything. Now let's take a look at the unit breakdowns. So we're going to have six blocks in total, three on the north and three on the south side, having one plus studies all the way to five bidders. So for one plus study, our more investment centric units, we're going to have one plus study, two bidders and two plus study, uh, making up about 40 over percent, less than 50 percent of the units, which I think is good. Now, here is one thing I think the developers for uh, Continuum, uh, they are uh, Hoi Hub and Sunway, they did quite well, which is they know that they definitely will have to launch at a higher PSF as compared to Tembusu and Grand Dunman, uh, considering they are freehold. Lah. So what they have did, they have actually, if you compare, I will do this in a separate video, right? But for the sake of this video, if you do pay attention to the sizes, especially the three bedroom compact, they did build it even smaller than the three bedroom compacts over at uh Tembusu Grand, right? Tembusu Grand, the smallest three bed, that's 990 square feet. Here, we're going to have an 872 square feet three bedroom compact. Now, what does that mean? That means that even with the higher PSF, there may be a chance that the three bedroom compact over at um, the continuum in terms of quantum, entry quantum may come out to be somewhat similar or maybe even lesser depending on how uh, aggressively the developers want to price uh, their units as compared to uh, Tembusu Grand, right? Um, because as the, shoot, as the shooting of this video, as per the time that we shot this video, the only info we have is Tembusu Grand, so it may be a bit hard for us to compare over uh, with Dunman, Grand Dunman, but We'll probably do another video of that once all the info is out and then just compare it, uh, the layouts, unit types uh, in a separate video. Okay. So um, one of the interesting things they did uh, for the five bedders uh, is to plant them over here. So in a way, they said that they will have a block view running through the entire length of the facilities. Uh, but do note uh, that this one at the top will likely have somewhere sun so this five bedder will probably be the more uh, sought after unit okay but if not in terms of blocks um, they do have a more premium block with just six units right the rest of them pretty standard eight to nine units uh, per block now let's take a look at the layouts okay so the developers have only released one two three four four layouts for now lah, basically those that will appear in the show flat so we're just going to review uh, those now for the first unit that i'm going to review it will be the two plus study now the first most important thing to note um, the differentiator perhaps between continuum and Tembusu grand and grand diamond is the fact that continuum because it's an on-block project the walls can be hacked but not, of course, not all walls, right? The thinner walls can be hacked. Now, let, let's take a look at the 2 plus study. So this 2 plus study dumbbell layout, as you enter into the house, is going to be a L-shaped kitchen. So I do quite like it. Again, no wasted space in terms of a uh, 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 narrow corridor. You open up straight, okay? It's, you're going to see 
the length of the house which is a pretty good length and the entire width uh, another thing that i do like is the storeroom that is tucked away at the corner over here so that's one of the things that the developers have said and it is uh, something unique to this development is the fact that all unit types they will at least put in a storage for you right so it's, this is not the kind of like storage that is uh, just a, a, a what do you call that? Like a cupboard, okay? It's like a proper sized uh, one that you can keep stuff with. I think that's a very nice uh, touch considering the size of the units uh, nowadays, okay? So uh, other than that, pretty standard dumbbell layout. Take a, uh, take a left and that's your master bedroom. King size bed can fit master bathroom so do not no natural ventilation because these units are not corner units right they are tucked uh, in between uh, so bedroom two the study is connected to bedroom two now that is interesting but the fact that the the toilet is over here i would think a lot of the owners may end up deciding to use this one as your bedroom two as your master bedroom those that buy for own stay la, and then you just uh, use this as your uh, walk-in wardrobe uh, but essentially then you turn it into um a two bedder right uh, the study over here i'm not sure yet if you can put in if you put in a door over here and a single bed can fit here like if you can do that then wow, this layout is not bad right good for investment uh, you can split this up rent out into one two three maybe even four bedrooms now moving on to the three bedroom premium okay so for the three bedroom premium uh, as you enter we have an entrance foyer uh, those of you who like it uh, would be the fact that you can leave your doors open and still allow ventilation to come through uh, but for the others, right, those that don't like will say that this is wasted space. Lah. Personally, I do quite like it because if you treat the entrance foyer well, uh, it can give a really good first impression. Okay, now as you take a step in, pretty standard with the kitchen being laid out on this side, uh, household shelter, again, right, that store area being put uh, over here. Now, it being put over here, I mean, I do like it that they have a store there, but had they choose to put the store somewhere else that giving people and a choice lah, to hack the store to make the space feel bigger uh, i think people have appreciated it i'm not sure i but i think you can choose to hack away the store and make the kitchen a little bit bigger but that's solely for the purpose of making the kitchen bigger like it wouldn't help make your living and dining space any bigger but other than that right that aside the kitchen is a really really good size for a three premium unit you have a household shelter you can choose whether to use it as a utility room or a bomb shelter helpers room and whatnot right the good thing like that's the good thing about having the store over there uh, even if you have to turn this into a helpers room you can still use the store as a storeroom okay uh, it, this for their three bedroom premium it is still the portrait layout why it says the portrait layout is front and back dining living so now that doesn't give you as much um, sliding doors as much window space as let's say a landscape layout that is dining living okay but that being said other than that not no real big complaints about the layout nice and regular uh, master bedroom is a pretty good size look at all the space around the, the beds uh, so over here good size enough size for a baby cot and whatnot lah as you come inside so natural ventilation both master bedroom and uh, the common bathroom but yeah other than that pretty standard for the three bedroom premium moving on to the three plus study that has a very interesting and unique layout let's take a look so the three plus study has a private lift okay so as you come out you step into your private lift lobby step inside so at, in first impressions uh, as you step inside i feel the place um it depends on how it's being executed right i hope you can see quite a wide balcony over here right i think it will look good luck because we have windows here and we have the whole window over here for the living and not just that because the kitchen is tucked at the back over here and this will be done in glass i think visually you're going to see a real good length of 
uh, windows that allows for a lot of natural light to come in. I think this is really, really quite unique. Okay, now as we step inside, a lot of the times when there's private lift, uh, the kitchen uh, becomes very very weirdly shaped uh, with a lot of long corridors uh, and whatnot okay but i think this kitchen is a really good size and i do like okay and this is something i must say i i hope to, i ho i would have hoped to see uh, more often in developments which is the kitchen being linked to the balcony uh, now that allows for really really good natural ventilation um, having the the glass over here helps the the space look really really big and for those of you who don't need such a big kitchen, you can turn this place into an island countertop, just make the place just look huge. Okay, a lot, a lot of flexibility. And I do like this part uh, of the house, the tree plus study. I think the, the layout is very, very interesting. Okay, of course, with all private lift units, there is a secondary entrance over here, just in case the lift breaks down or is being serviced. Blah. So as you step in over here, you're gonna have a store. Um, interesting thing, they do not have a bomb shelter for the tree plus study. So in exchange for the bomb shelter, you have uh, the lift shaft. Uh, but personally, I, I do like the tree plus study more than the very standard uh, uh, three bedroom premium. Okay, and then as you step over here, the study is not tucked away in a corner or whatnot, right? So it's, it's really a nook over here. So. If you don't need the study, it gives you a huge living dining area, very nice square uh, over here. Okay, the master bedroom is also very nice because we have windows here and windows here. So now that gives you a nice and bright master bedroom. Uh, you can choose to orientate your bed this this way as well or this way, right? If orientate it this way, uh, you can have your TV over here. La. It's just a bit weird that this part is a is a wall instead of a window if this was a window why wow, you have the l shaped window over here very very nice the only complaint is maybe the the wardrobe for the master bedroom it could have been a bit bigger maybe okay the two and the three bedders uh the bedroom two and bedroom three very good size uh queen size bed and whatnot so on that note pretty standard like i like it how they are linked directly into bath two uh but looking at bath two uh, it looks a uh, bit small uh, you see just the toilet bowl over here it's so small that they only can put in a sliding door la. Uh, you know what but bathrooms aren't really the, the, the way people don't buy house because of bathrooms they may raise a, a little bit of concern but you know other than that huge fan of this particular layout now the last layout that we're gonna review is the five beta. Okay, so let's start off first with the lift. Okay, so like I mentioned in the previous layout, right, the three plus study, and why I, I do actually like the three plus study more than this particular one. Let me share with you why. So the private lift lands right smack in the middle of the whole unit. Okay, so the downside, what I don't like about that is then that creates a lot of walkway area. Look at the wet kitchen and how long uh, that walkway is. Uh, you see this corridor, also long corridor. And then the master bedroom. I mean, they managed to pull it off well with this super duper big walk-in wardrobe, right? But some the naysayers will say there's a lot of wasted corridor space. Lah, huh? So not, right, that's the downside, but they have its plus points as well la. so as you step out of the private leaf lobby you're gonna get so here is gonna be windows right just one wall over here and this is gonna be windows as well so you essentially have a l shape huge l shape uh, window uh, balcony over here so i can imagine this space being very very bright okay uh, and so over here they have laid out a dining table that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten a ten seater round dining table so you can just imagine how big uh, this space is going to be plus a dry kitchen okay so i'm going to go clockwise now coming down junior master bedroom quite standard Okay, just maybe a bit weird that you have the dry kitchen uh, and then the so the master bedroom right it's like in between the dry kitchen and the wet kitchen a little bit odd and also the window over here uh, it may not look that big lah when you actually get the unit right but other than that uh, pretty standard for the junior master 
What I don't quite like really would be this uh, long wet kitchen. I mean, the size for the kitchen size for a five bedder is not that big. You notice, uh, if you scroll up, right, it looks pretty much like the the three premium uh, kitchen lah. And I think maybe even the, the, the three plus study kitchen. So it's not that much bigger, it's just really, really long. And because there's this long wall over here, uh, it doesn't really help. Uh, it just extends the length, but it doesn't really give that much more uh, countertop space. Right, so I, I do, uh, on that note, right, not such a big fan of the wet kitchen uh, over here. Now the rest of the parts of the house, the household shelter, uh, storage area, right? Still, right, every unit have that storage area over here. So this part quite regular, so not so bad. Okay, now moving then up towards the master bedroom. Very, very nice master bedroom. The only complaint is that I would have hoped they have that L-shaped window. So on that note, maybe the three plus study uh, master bedroom actually would be nicer uh, to me. Lah. But I think if they pull this off well, and this is going to be the show flat, then this is something I will keep my eye out on how nice they can pull off this walk-in uh, wardrobe because it's going to be huge. And I think it's going to be it's going to look really really nice okay bedroom three bedroom four uh, mirror image pretty standard in terms of size lah. and then a uh, bedroom five a little bit smaller uh, but then again if you want to hack and open it up and make your living area even bigger you can do so now for the reason you guys are here for the three things we like and don't like about the continuum Point number one of what we like about the continuum, the concept of new versus old supply. Like what I mentioned in the Tembusu Grand video, the supply in the area are primarily 10 to 15 years old, belonging to the era of bay windows. And with two bedders coming in at sizes of about 1,000 square feet and three bedders above 1,300 square feet, as we can see over here. Now, we have consolidated all of the developments or similar developments in D15 into a sheet like that uh, with developments around the continuum as well as D15 as a whole. So here we have Butterworth 8, we have two, like you can see the two bedders are about a thousand square feet, three bedders thousand three hundred square feet. Uh, we have Katong Regency as well, nine years old development, uh, one bedders thousand five hundred and eighty four square feet. Two bedders, a thousand square feet. Three bedders, thousand three hundred square feet. And a little bit further out, we can take a look at the sea view. Uh, over here, we have one bedders at five hundred and sixty square feet. No two bedders, three bedders at thousand three hundred square feet. So another thing you will notice is a surprising lack of supply of one bedders in the area as well. With the units at Continuum coming in at sizes like six hundred plus square feet for two bedrooms. 800 plus square feet for three bedrooms, it gives us security in terms of the entry price quantums despite the higher PSF. I'll give you an example. Say we have to enter the continuum two bedroom at 600 plus square feet at 3000 PSF, that brings you to about 1.8 to 1.9 million. But let's go into property guru and take a look at the two bedrooms um, in some of the larger D15 um, projects. So here we have one amber and with one amber at 958 square feet for two bedroom, um, it brings us, brings us to a quantum of 2.5 million. We look at another example at the Shaw residences. Because it's more than a thousand square feet, it brings us to 2.18 million. And bear in mind, the Shaw residences is only 103 leasehold. You tend to only get such examples in mature private estates such as the CCR or District 15. If you go into the OCR, the new and the old supply tend to be about the same size. Meaning, if you enter at new benchmark PSF, you don't have the security that someone has already paid that kind of quantum for that area in the resale market. So on to point two on why we like the continuum, the location. So on top of all the amenities around the continuum, we want to dive a little deeper into why we like the location. Firstly, District 15 is that one area other than the CCR that offers a kind of aspirational attribute to it. Now, what do we mean by that? So if you go around asking your friends, hey, if money is not an issue, where would you stay? So you tend to get answers like, uh, Bukit Timah, Holland Village, maybe Amber, and uh, Mayor area. And why do people say that? It's because they either grew up in the area and their parents can help them 
you know, with money to buy a house in the same area or they grew up having friends and relatives staying there and they think to themselves, when I grow up and make money, I want to stay there too. So now that gives the area strong organic demand as well as long-term demand offering you certainty in terms of your exit. Secondly, schools. While there are a number of primary schools in District 15, there is actually only two really popular ones, Taonan and Konghua. Now with District 15 being made up of lots of landed properties, there's only that many condos that's located within 1km of these schools. Now that gives you additional certainty in terms of your exit. Thirdly, the unlocking of potential with the impending opening of the Thomson East Coastline. An interesting phenomenon that we notice is that despite District 15 being closer to the CBD compared to areas like Queenstown and Tiong Bahru, District 15 rentals are actually lower than them. Yes, Queenstown and Tiong Bahru has its own fans and its own charm. But we would say District 15 would come out on top in terms of the sheer number of F&B options, culture, history, etc. And our guess as to why that is, is due to the lack of MRT. And with the Thompson East Coast Line opening really soon, we are pretty sure that will bring about an increase in rental for District 15. And with the increase in rental comes the inevitable increase in price as well. Point three on why we like the continuum, size of development. So continuum is going to be the largest freehold development in District 15 by number of units. And why is that a big deal? Firstly, if you track the performance of large freehold developments in District 15, the results are fantastic. Now let's take a look at a few examples. Over here we have the ASTAR. Now the ASTAR is a 15-year-old development with about 400 units. And based on the transactions in the last year alone, two bidders have averaged a profit of half a million dollars, three bidders 1.45 million, and four bidders a million dollars. Uh, we have one Ember that is just across the road from the ESTA 14 year old development, 562 units, average profitability. Uh, we can see over here one bidders. Uh, 125,000, 2 bidders 350,000, 3 bidders 1.12 million, 4 bidders also about 1.2 million. All right. Over here we have the average number of holding uh, days as well. Uh, then we have the C view. Okay. The C view, 546 units, also a 15 year old development. Uh, one bidders average profit $257,000, 3 bidders close to a million and four bidders $1.8 million. Now, if you'd like to take a look in greater detail for this uh, uh, spreadsheet that we have, feel free to drop us a text. We could share uh, all this data with you as well. Well, the more recent narratives is that if you want to make money faster, buy 99 years leasehold developments. While that is generally true, Large freehold developments, especially in sought after areas like District 15, might not lose out either. Secondly, large freehold plots are super hard to come by. The only reason why we have this opportunity is because the Wee family kept this piece of land for 80 years before deciding to sell it. There's a reason why Faiz sold the shop at only 103 years leasehold. With on blocks becoming increasingly hard to come by because of the cooling measures, interest rates, uh, construction costs, we believe it's going to take a long, long time before we see a similar large plot coming online anywhere near the future. And while we are on the point of size of development, this brings us nicely to the next part of the video, the three things we don't quite like about the continuum. If you enjoyed the review so far, don't forget to like and subscribe as it will help out the channel a ton. And also to give us a little bit of motivation to continue putting out content like that. Now, back to the video. Point one on what we don't quite like about the continuum, the site being split into two. That is really peculiar because it turns what was originally a huge 800 unit development into essentially 
two 400 condos linked by an overhead bridge. So you don't get the kind of grand spacious feeling, you know, that you get at huge developments. Now, let me give you an example, okay? case in point, Costa Ru and Pebble Bay. Now, despite their age, they both have very, very strong transactions and good price movements. And we sort of figured that one of the reasons, perhaps, is because every time we bring buyers to those developments, their feedback is, wow, this place is very big, very nice, very comfortable. I mean, the picture is that you get two times of everything while still enjoying the volume of transactions that you get from a big development. How I see it is that this is ideal for those buyers that prefer the exclusiveness of a mid-sized development, but yet still want good capital appreciation. Point number two on why we don't quite like the continuum is sandwich price point. Now, why we use the word sandwich is because at close to 3,000 PSF, that brings us very close to some of the new launch PSFs in the CCR. Now, while we still have this whole new versus old supply dynamics working in our favour, you may just want to open up your options to consider what are what else are there in the market right now? For those looking for a shorter term exit, there is still Tembusu Grand and Grand Diamond, which are all relatively large size developments, 99 years, which may be a more compelling alternative. Now on to the third point on what we don't quite like about the continuum, the lack of views. We are being surrounded by developments left and right and with Tiamsu Avenue running through the middle of the development, we won't be getting any of those unblocked views, neither will we be getting our inward facing pool views. Now that isn't a huge deal breaker because if you look at the Amber area, most of the condos there don't have views as well but yet they still do very very well in terms of capital appreciation. Generally in District 15, if you want views, you tend to come with West Sun, Highway Noise or an insane price tag. So in summary, the points that we like about the continuum, point number one, the concept of new versus old supply with the older resale supply being significantly larger in size. Number two, its location with its strong organic demand and aspirational attribute plus the new MRT coming up. And point number three, it being the largest freehold development in terms of unit size in District 15. And what we don't quite like about the continuum, number one, the site essentially being split into two 400 unit development. And point number two, the sandwich price point. And point number three, the lack of views. Now, if you'd like to take a look at our consolidation of District 15 alternatives and research information that help us create this video, we'll be happy to send it to you. Just drop us a text. For those of you looking for investment, I still feel that CCR represents good value for money and an area that you, you should pay attention to for the biggest reason being those lands were purchased at the old price point purchased a couple of years ago. For those of you looking for old stay and would like something perhaps a bit newer or something brand new, you could consider some of the boutique developments in District 15 and I feel those are interesting in their own way because they offer three bidders at a really decent entry price, right? So for those of you looking for own stay and perhaps maybe a bit budget conscious, those are some, uh, those are a good alternative that you can consider. But do bear in mind, you then need to factor a slightly longer holding period because the data has shown that if you buy smaller developments in District 15, you still have a chance to do well, provided you have a longer holding period, all right? Now, if you are looking at slightly bigger developments in the resale market, we have a list because that list was created as part of the research to, to, to do this video. We'd be happy to send it to you and just drop us a text. Uh, it's already consolidated in terms of one bidders, two bidders, three bidders. Happy to send it to you. But if you want to figure out what's the best way to, you know, maximize your moves in the resale market, we have prepared a brand new buyer's guide. So we have our seller's guide. Now we have the buyer's guide as well to help buyers be able to spot good buys in the resale market. Right, brand new for 2023. So drop us a text and we're happy to send it over to you. If you like the top process that went behind the creation of this video and review, allow me to share with you how we utilize a similar systematic and data-driven approach to help our clients achieve clarity and maximize their property moves. We call it our why, how, what framework. 
What we talked about today very much focuses on the outside circle, the what, right? The attributes of a particular project, location, so on and so forth. But some of the pitfalls attached to utilizing this particular approach and coming from the outside in is number one, you may potentially be susceptible to FOMO. And especially if you go into a show flat at launch that has been specifically designed to elicit that reaction. I've seen multiple clients, multiple viewers going into a show flat, making a rash decision and subsequently regretting it. And the whole reason that happens is because the entire property plan is not well thought out first. Okay, then number two, right? How do you actually compare the different projects and different properties that you see? Right? A lot of people don't know how to do that and they end up being more confused. The more properties they see, the more confused they get. Now, we will address that as part of the second circle, the how. How do you compare properties on an apple to apple basis? And especially for this particular case, how do you compare Tembusu Grand that's 99 years with a freehold continuum? And how you how is that going to compare with Grand Dunman that is closest to the MRT? Now, the answer is it's very, very different based on the individual. What's best for me may not be best for you. But most importantly is how do we design the most solid property plan to get us to where we want to get to, right? We make sure we answer questions and ask ourselves questions like that and tick the boxes and do the necessary things listed over here. And lastly, more importantly, it's the why. Right. We've shared our why and we shared the whole rationale behind our approach in multiple videos and I'm going to put those links in the description below or somewhere in this video so you can go and take a look because fundamentally we see property as a means to an end right? and we structure and we design our property plan from the end goal backwards and how can we get there and how can we help our clients get there in the safest, fastest way possible. So if you resonate with this approach, feel free to drop us a text and we'd be happy to help. And please don't forget to like and subscribe as you help out the channel a ton. Till next time, bye bye.